Okay, guys, this is a quick explanation of Rolle's theorem um, for six period. So Rolle's theorem is very similar to mean value theorem. It states if f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b and differentiable, on the open interval a to b. Now, as of that point, this is identical to mean value theorem. Mean value theorem has to be continuous on this interval and differentiable on this interval. But there's one extra step, and f of a and f of b are the same. There must exist an x equals c within a to b such that now, we're going to draw the same three pictures that we did for mean value theorem yesterday, uh, but we're going to talk about how Rolle's theorem is different. So if you remember yesterday, we drew a quadratic. We drew a cubic. And we drew an absolute value. Okay, now remember, for these graphs, they're continuous. Okay, they're differentiable, but I have to pick my a and my b on my interval to be equal to each other. Now, keep in mind that both of these are y values. So, I want to pick on this guy y values that are the same height. Okay, so that means this is my a, this is my b. My cubic, I can do that as well. Let's say this is going to be my f of a, this is going to be my f of b. So, I'm choosing my a and b values so that on either side they're the same height so a and b okay I want you to imagine if I did mean value theorem on this um, on these graphs remember that mean value theorem says that my secant slope okay which is here needs to have a point where that's the exact slope f prime so think about if I choose Okay, for all three of these graphs, points that have the exact same y value, then my slope of my secant line is going to come out to be 0. So I need f prime of c for Rolle's theorem. Instead of equaling the average rate of change, it's just going to equal 0. Because if these guys match, my slope is going to be flat across anyway. Same thing for this one. If my y values here are the same, then I know that I'm going to have to have a place where my tangent line is flat and the slope is 0. Same thing on this graph. It's flat at the bottom of that u, so then that would be my potential c. Over here, that would be my c. Now, if you notice on our cubic graph, there's actually another place where it's flat across. Okay, but this value could not be my c because remember c needs to be within the interval from a to b and so if i tried to put c out here that is not going to work so it also has a zero slope but it's not on the interval okay so um, we're going to just do like two examples. We'll do one in your notes. We'll do one off of the homework just to make sure that you got it. So the example that we're going to look at for Rolle's theorem is y equals um, x squared minus 4x plus 4. And we're going to find the c value that satisfies Rolle's theorem. Okay, find the c-value that satisfies Rolle's theorem. So the first thing that I'm going to do is check that my function is, as stated here, both continuous and differentiable. Okay, but I know that it is because it's a polynomial. Okay, so because poly. Remember that all of your polynomials are going to be safe. x cubed, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the one hundredth, whatever. Okay, step two. For Rolle's theorem, 
rather than finding the average rate of change, I'm just going to show that my endpoints are the same. And oops, I forgot to give you the interval. It's from 0 to 4. So I need to find f of 0. I need to find f of 4. I need to show that they match each other. So plugging in 0 first, I have 0 minus 4 times 0. And then plus 4. Well, that comes out to 4. Easy. Now we're plugging in 4 here. I have 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 4. That's 16. That's negative 16. Those cross out. I get 4 again. Those came out to be the same. Now remember that on my graph, that means that if I go to 0 and 4 on my parabola, my y value is 4 for both. So 0, 4, 4, 4. Then maybe my graph looks something like that. But if I connected a secant line between those, my slope would be 0. So by Rolle's theorem, I can state because these are the same, there must exist an x equals c within the interval from 0 to 4, so that or such that f prime of c equals that slope, which is 0. Why does it have to equal 0? Because my graph has to go from 4 back to 4, then it's going to have to hit a flat spot on my graph. Now remember from there, to find the c, okay, for mean value theorem, I take the derivative, I set it equal to the slope that I want. Nothing different here, I'm going to take the derivative, and I'm going to set it equal to a slope of 0. Because since my y values are the same, my secant line would have been flat. f prime of x, look at your equation right here, is 2x minus 4. Then the plus 4, remember that derivative cancels out to 0. Set that equal to 0. Then I'm going to add my 4 across, 2x is 4. Then divide by 2, x is 2. That would be my c value. Now, also remember that we talked about this value has to be on your interval. Well, if my interval is from 0 to 4, then 2 fits between that. So I am done. Alrighty. So the other example that we're going to work is going to be off of homework 9. So if you'll get out homework 9, we're going to do the bottom little section. Okay, so take a look at your homework 9 right here. Okay, first one we're going to do is number 7. So first thing that I'm doing is it says use Rolle's theorem to prove there's a horizontal tangent. That just means a zero slope. Okay, so don't overthink that. Need to have a zero slope on the graph, then find where it occurs. So first thing I'm going to do is state that it's continuous and differentiable. Okay, mainly because x squared is a polynomial, so it's good to go. Step number two, I'm going to find the y value at 0 and the y value at 3. f of 0 would be 0 squared minus 3 times 0. That comes out to 0. Next, I'm going to plug in 3. That's 3 squared minus 3 times 3. But that's 9. That's 9. So when I subtract them, I get 0. Now, because those are the same, that means that Rolle's theorem guarantees there must exist an x equals c within the interval from 0 to 3, such that f prime of c is 0. Remember that if these match, my graph had to turn around, that means it has to have a 0 for my f prime, which is my slope. Now, to find the c, I need to take the derivative then set it equal to 0. So my derivative here would be 2x minus 3, and I'm setting that equal to 0. Well, then if I add my 3 across, 2x is 3, then x is 3 halves, which is my c value. Now also keep in mind, 3 halves, that does fit between 0 and 3, so that's good. Okay, other two I want to look at are 9 and 10. Number 9, think about the graph of y equals absolute value x. Okay, we looked at that graph in class today. That's the shape of a v. So if I'm looking from negative 2 to 2, from here to here, my y values are the same height. But remember, my function first has to be continuous and differentiable. So I notice immediately looking at this, there's a corner that is not differentiable. 
So I would put uh, Rolle's theorem does not apply because absolute value x has a corner at 0 and is not differentiable. Now, keep in mind that if it had a corner outside of the interval I was looking at, nobody would care. But negative 2 to 2, that does include 0 between it. Okay, last one we're going to do together. Look at number 10. You have the sine x graph. Okay, think about what that looks like. It starts at 0, and it just does this for forever. So sine x is both continuous and differentiable. So check that off the list. Step number 2. My y values need to come out the same. So I'm going to find f of pi halves. I'm going to find f of pi. Because my interval is from pi halves to pi. So first thing I do is plug in pi halves. Will that be the sine of pi halves? Okay, so think about your hand trick. Pi halves is your thumb. All of your fingers are going to be below your thumb. So the sine of pi halves is 1. Sine of pi, however, that's your pinky finger. So that's going to be 0. It's the sine of 0, which is 0. Okay, now, remember, for Rolle's theorem, continuous and differentiable, but these guys had to match. So since they do not match, I would say Rolle's does not apply. Does not apply. Because f of pi halves did not come out equal to f of pi. And remember, you can only use rolls if those endpoints came out to be the same with each other. Okay? All right, good job.